Here's a little graphic story about two pathways to the use of ICT in the classroom. First of all, path A. Well, teacher comes across an interesting ICT application. It's immediately intriguing, so the teacher investigates it, checks it out, tries it out, has a look at what its initial applications are. Doesn't get to know it in great detail yet, but gets a taste of what it can do. The teacher might then say, right, might go either of two ways. First, introduce a task to students using this tool, try it out, and uh, get some educational benefits from it. But now I've jumped across into path B. This is the preferred path I'm suggesting. The teacher pauses for a while and says, how can I use it? And how does its use benefit something in the general curriculum? Not talking about an ICT outcome, but a general benefit that, that existed prior to um, seeing this, um, this tool. Next step, the teacher might go on on path A, uh, thinks about the outcomes that will come from the use of this tool uh, for learning directly. And so the students use the tool competently. That's the sort of outcome we'll get from that approach from path A. We go back to path B, the teacher does a bit more reflecting, a bit of a pause, and reflects on the core learning from the general curriculum that might result from using this tool. So it's thinking about core learning and then the support that ICT gives. So the ICT is a supplement. It's not the main focus. And it's important then to specify when the teacher's thinking about some learning the students are going to do, to specify what are the core learning expectations. What do you expect students to be able to do as a result of going through this process and using this tool? Introduce the task to students. Then the outcomes are likely to be the students demonstrate some core learning and they use the tool competently. So path B is a much more thoughtful, reflective process. A few more steps, but better outcomes.